What's going on guys? We are out here on a frozen heat pump service call. Customer was outside and noticed uh, their package unit had some ice on it. So they gave us a call. Pretty frozen, not terrible, but uh, it's a 2013 carrier package unit. So what I like to do, as you can hopefully tell it is running right now. What I typically like to do when I find them uh, frozen up like this is go ahead and take the electrical door off and the first thing I usually do is ohm out the defrost sensor. I want to see if that sensor is open or closed. If it is closed, indicating that the sensor is uh, working properly, I'll go ahead and speed up the test pins on the board and see if it'll initiate a defrost. If it's open, obviously with this amount of ice it should be closed, um, then we may have a defrost sensor problem. So. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pop this door off and we will start there and see what we find. All right guys, so we have a little bit of a change of plans. This is actually a communicating package system. Um, chooses the infinity control. So this does not have an open and closed defrost stat. This actually has thermistors. And by the way, side note, this is a terrible design um, for these systems. As you can see I had to stuff a rag in here because all this water just literally drips down and uh, gets all over everything, all over the electrical, sucks water into the blower, um, just, a, just a very poor design. I wish they would have actually made this lip like a gutter that would drain on the far ends of this unit. But uh, anyways, it is what it is. So, like I said, this unit has thermistors, it doesn't have a defrost thermostat open and close stat so it's gonna be kind of hard to see but these two brown wires and these two black wires are a coil sensor and an outdoor sensor so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unplug that Molex back there they are 10k ohm resistors so I am going to take that out get my little ohm chart and I'm gonna ohm both of those sensors out see what kind of resistance we're reading and chart it and make sure that the uh, the resistance is correct on there. I have a feeling that it's probably out of range so it doesn't know that the unit's actually frozen which happens quite often but it's probably either gonna, either gonna be those sensors going bad or possibly the uh, the board. I do see a little bit of corrosion back there where the outdoor fan connects um, but again just a just preliminary look and uh, there's another one of those little 3.2 amp resettables. Obviously, I'm not going to take this one because we are not condemning this unit. But, uh, yeah, like I said, they're everywhere when you look for them. But I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera down, disconnect that, uh, get my multimeter out and my 10K ohm resistance chart, and we will see what those sensors are reading. Okay, so we have our little harness disconnected. The two black wires are our outdoor sensor, and the two brown wires are the outdoor coil sensor so I'm ohming those out right now you can see our outdoor sensor is reading 19,400 ohms not sure how well you'll be able to see but I do have a 10k ohm resistance chart here so we're just gonna go down and find 19,500 or somewhere close hopefully you can see I have to keep covering it up right in the middle of the screen there is 19,600 if you look directly to the left of that 52 degrees Fahrenheit and it's about it's about 49 degrees out here 49 to 50 degrees so that sensor is reading fine so I'm gonna go ahead and shut this camera off real quick I'm gonna switch over to the outdoor sensor and we will check the resistance there all right so as you can see we are connected to our outdoor coil sensor now we are reading 43,600 ohms if we go to our chart on here find 43,000 or just thereabouts you can see 44,000 right there right in the center of the screen to the left of that is 25 degrees Fahrenheit so that's probably about right we're definitely within range telling it that uh, telling me that both of those sensors are functioning properly so I'm gonna go ahead and connect that Molex back to the board and um, since it is an evolution system or excuse me an infinity system um, I'm going to go ahead and restart everything, put it in test mode. There is, try to see down there on the board, there is a force defrost 
test pins. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn everything back on, get everything up and running, and then I'm going to short those test pins and see if it initiates a defrost. And that will verify to me whether this control board is working properly since we know our sensors are good. So that's going to be my next step. As you can see, my rag has started to get saturated with water. And now my rag is dripping. As you can see right there. So I'm going to go get another rag so I don't get all this electrical wet. Terrible design, terrible design. All right, guys, so we have everything in defrost now. I shorted those test pins out. Um, it's been in defrost now for three or four minutes. Um, but like I was saying before, as soon as I initiate a defrost, all this is just going to pour water down on the circuit boards, uh, on the blower, and all that, possibly ruining something that wasn't bad to begin with. So instead of creating a problem for the sake of filming, I went ahead and shorted those test pins, made sure it went into defrost, and then buttoned the doors back up. So and that's where we're at right now guys so we know our sensors are both good we know our defrost board initiated the defrost just fine so all that seems to be good um, so now basically what we're going to do is we're going to let it go through a defrost cycle it's probably going to terminate on a 10 minute defrost instead of uh, terminating on temperature just because of how much ice is on this unit so now i'm leaning towards possibly a issue with a refrigerant charge uh, versus anything electrical because like I said all of our sensors and boards seem to be operating properly but since this unit will terminate defrost after 10 minutes regardless whether there's ice on the unit or not um, that could be our issue we could have a, a low refrigerant charge so it's not generating enough heat through this coil to melt the ice in that time allotted and it's just kind of piling up on itself over time so we're just going to let it uh, let it go. Should be another five or six minutes, and it should terminate defrost. And uh, yeah, then we'll go ahead and throw the gauges on this thing and check our refrigerant charge. As you can see, it is generating some heat. We got lots of water rolling off this thing, but I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and get some of my junk out of the way so it doesn't get flooded. And uh, wait for defrost to terminate. And while I'm waiting, I went ahead and popped the door off of the compressor compartment. And I did notice that that uh, evaporator coil is trying to freeze up a little bit. Could be airflow, could be low on charge, but uh, I just noticed on those, those distributor tubes, one, two, three, you can see they're starting to frost up a little bit, so just, uh, just something to keep in mind. But. There's the termination of our defrost after 10 minutes. You can see we still have ice. So it had not finished the defrost cycle or the time elapsed basically um, made it terminate defrost. So basically what I'm gonna do now is I am going to shut this unit down, grab my hose and uh, melt the rest of this ice manually. Then I'm gonna go ahead and check the refrigerant charge on this thing and see where our refrigerant numbers are and we'll kind of go from there, see what uh, see what that tells us. So that's the next step. All right, guys, it took some doing, but we got all the ice off of the coil on the inside and the outside. Not sure how well you can see, but got all the ice off. I'll include a picture of the indoor coil. Indoor coil is not dirty; might be a hair dusty, but uh, not dirty at all. Indoor filter is. Uh, pretty dusty, but I don't think that's the culprit. And uh, I just turned it on, it's been running for probably less than five minutes. But being 410A, this is a two stage unit, oops, and it is not R22, it is 410A. Not that it matters, but for this situation, but as you can see, 410A. This is a two stage as I was saying, it is running in high stage right now and uh, we are pretty darn low running a 50 suction pressure so that looks like that's going to be our problem. The system is low on refrigerant and uh, you can see our accumulator is already frosting over pretty quickly but I didn't see any signs of oil anywhere 
Uh, it does have those crappy Cormax fittings on this unit, so who knows if those are leaking. Uh, I don't believe the unit's been serviced in a few years, to my knowledge. Um, which is kind of evident with all the garbage and stuff down inside of it, but nothing jumped out at me as far as seeing any signs of oil or anything to this point. Didn't see any signs of oil in the evaporator coil either. But, uh, yeah, all signs are leading to, uh, it being a little bit low on refrigerant. So, I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes to see if it's gonna try and come up, but, uh, just judging by that, I don't think we're coming up. It's about 52 degrees outside right now, so we should be, uh, we should be well above that, uh, that evaporator pressure right there, three degrees. That'll definitely make it freeze up. And also, prevent it from thoroughly melting because again it is low on refrigerant so when you have that uh, that 10 minute defrost time if you can't generate enough heat because you're low on refrigerant you'll just start accumulating that ice on the coil so I believe that's what's going to be our situation here so again I'm going to give a few more minutes and uh, probably end up getting the refrigerant charge right on this thing and then breaking out the leak detector and seeing what we can find. All right, as you saw in that quick clip of the indoor filter, it was pretty funky. Um, I didn't include the pressures, but it was running almost a 450 pound head. It is about 55 or 56 degrees outside right now. Um, once I took that filter out, dropped about 50 PSI, 90 and 400. Again, 55 degrees outside. I have just under three pounds of refrigerant in the system, so. I'm probably going to go ahead and leave it there for now. I'm going to go ahead and shut the system down and leak check. Um, but that filter inside was kind of concaved and uh, hopefully you could hear the fan uh, when I was pulling that filter out. It was, it was restricting quite a bit of air. So in a perfect world, you would want to take the refrigerant out of this package unit and weigh in the factory charge just to make sure it's correct. Um, since it was low on refrigerant, I'm hoping that I do find a source of the refrigerant leak and then we would be recovering and repairing the unit anyways and weighing in the factory charge. So, uh, But that's where I'm at right now. Everything else electrically looks good. Looks like we're just going to be chasing a refrigerant leak here. So I got the uh, Inficon TechMate out. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this system down. And uh, we'll sniff around see if we can find what's leaking. Alright guys, I was using the uh, TechMate. I was picking up refrigerant. Just wasn't able to pinpoint anything. It is, uh, I'm not sure if you can see the trees moving over there, but it is, uh, it is a little windy out here. So, kind of hit or miss everywhere. So, went ahead and uh, broke out the big blue and just sort of doused everything. And I wasn't seeing really anything at all on the evaporator. Um, also, uh, so bubbled the uh, pressure switches, um, checked the core max fittings, couldn't find anything. So bubbled all the condenser coil fittings, really didn't see anything at all. And then I did find that leak on the condenser coil. Not a big leak, but definitely a leak nevertheless. So. You can see right where that uh, that drop of big blue is dripping from right there. It's kind of hard to get a picture back there. It doesn't want to focus, but right there. That's where I did find a leak, so. Looks like we're gonna be getting a new condenser coil for this unit. Like I said, it's a really small leak, um, but this thing is under a 10 year parts and labor warranty. Not sure how well you can see. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't want to focus but uh, it is under a 10 year parts and labor warranty so we're gonna go ahead and uh, order this condenser coil and get it swapped out but again I was picking up refrigerant with the electronic leak detector but when all else fails I just douse everything with uh, big blue and if there's a leak it'll usually find it 
Also did the reversing valve back there. Didn't find anything on there. Same thing with the accumulator. So uh, even soap bubbled the uh, piston bodies right here. Didn't find anything. So definitely looks like that is our that is our culprit right there. So yeah, but she's charged up, so she'll work fine and. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how this coil comes if it if you buy it in two pieces or when you order the condenser coil uh, both sides because this is a it's kind of hard to see but it is a two-piece condenser coil you can see from here all the way around to here is one piece and then from back there all the way around is the second piece so really not sure how it comes if it's like a left and right front or back type deal um, but uh, since it is under 10-year parts and labor, if it does come in separate pieces, we'll just get both of them and uh, get it taken care of. But, yeah, that's what we found, guys. So, like I said, it's just a process. Um, some guys might cut straight to uh, getting the ice off of a unit and checking the refrigerant charge. While it's frozen, I always like to uh, double-check the sensors and the control boards just to make sure all that's working. But, uh, yeah. We did find the source of the problem. It was low on refrigerant. That's why it froze up. And uh, we did find the leak. So I'd call this a success. But yeah, stay tuned. If I'm the one that comes out to uh, replace this coil, I'll definitely try to uh, film it for you guys. And yeah, so hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And we will see you on the next one.